Hello and welcome to the Internal Medicine Series for Clinical Clerkships. Today we will be discussing the general area of cardiovascular disorders, specifically relating to the modified due criteria. So just a brief overview, infective endocarditis is defined as the inflammation, right? It's inflammation, the itis, of the heart, specifically the inner lining of the heart, the most inner layer, the endo layer, right? And it is infective because the source is suggested to be external to the body. So basically, in summary, infective endocarditis is an inflammation of the inner layer of the heart due to an external source. Um, without treatment, for the most part, infective endocarditis, the mortality is about 100%. So it's not too hard to imagine that then the goal, right, in patient care is to begin treatment as soon as possible. And this is the entire purpose of the modified due criteria. It allows for clinical and pathological risk stratification of patients in order to begin treatment at the earliest time. So there are three types of criteria, the pathologic, the major, and the minor. Really, it's kind of like this. It's more like a hierarchy, right? The pathologic is the most definitive, major is definite, and minor. For the most part, you can think it's maybe nonspecific, but could also relate to uh, the disease entity. So first, let's discuss the pathologic criteria. So before I begin, I want to say that it's all about the vegetations, okay? So pathology suggests two entities, the histology and also microbiology, right? So the pathology or the histology is regarding the histology of the diseased valvulets perhaps or of the vegetation. So in this one, we see that there is a valvulet right over here. This is like the mitral valve um, and attached to the valve, we see this big nasty monstrosity of a vegetation. And this is, remember, it's called coming back to the vegetation, right? So this is a pathology, the histological criteria. And if you see this, for the most part, the patient has expired, okay? Um, but this is one of the most important criteria, or it's one of the most definitive criteria for diagnosing an infective endocarditis, right, by the Duke's criteria. The other, the second uh, pathologic criteria is not by histology, but by microbiology. So for instance, you, you get a sample of this big vegetation right over here at the anterior lethal in the mitral valve, and you grow it in the culture and it begins growing organisms, then once again, you see that it's about the vegetation, it's the microbiology of this vegetation, it's growing organisms. That is also positive as a pathologic criteria. So you really only need either one of these two pathologic criteria to define um, a definitive uh, infective endocarditis state. The major criteria is really the most important because this is the one that we see clinically, right? Like I said, the pathologic criteria is usually based on, you know, histology and also microbiology or the valve leaflets and the and, and the uh, or the vegetations. But for the most part, it's not entirely relevant because the patient has expired by then. So we really rely on the major criteria. And the way I remember the major criteria is really by the nomenclature of infective endocarditis. Right? Infective suggests that there is an infection propagating within the body. And this reminds me that we're really looking at the microbiology, right? The micro slash culture, okay? Okay, maybe I should spell this out. And endocarditis reminds me that this is really a disease of the heart. So now we're really looking at the radiographical evidence, okay? We're looking for evidence that the heart is in the diseased state and for the most part, it's relating to radiology. All right, so let's talk about the major criteria with the nomenclature um, mnemonic in mind, right? So it's infective and also endocarditis, but what we're really saying is cultures and the heart, right? So if we're talking about cultures, any one of these criteria, if they're met, that suggests that we have a checkpoint of one positive major criteria. Um, you can just read this. And then the second, heart involvement, right? So how do we define a heart involvement? Obviously, we're not going to you know, open the patient up and, and check the heart for anything. No, we're, we're going to primarily be doing this through uh, radiographical evidence. So, you know, uh, echo, t, uh, trans esophageal echocardiogram. Um, and if you see a vegetation abscess or a new onset regurgitation, this is suggestive of heart involvement, and you can have a second checkbox right here. So there's really two major criteria, and these are very important because this is really uh, most relevant to the clinical setting of defining whether a patient truly has definitive infective endocarditis.
So this is kind of a silly way for me to remember the five minor criteria. Um, I have to say, as a medical student, you know, when you're on the wards and the attending asks you, oh, well, what, what are the inf what are the major and minor criteria of infective endocarditis? The major ones, you know, you can remember, but the minor ones are really tough to remember because um, they're like non-specific things. Uh, so I, I've kind of created a very easy um, to remember way of of thinking about what the minor criteria are. So. Let's take this back to, to, to this little stick figure right here, this, this little person right here. Um, you know, as a kid, I remember I used to draw like, stick figures, things like that. And when I when I tried to go from stick figure to drawing humans, like the, the more of the body's form, you know, you, you can transition into this mid-level stick figure where it, it has like these little joints and things like that. Um, but this is what we're going to be talking uh, about, the five minor criteria. I use this picture right here to help me remember, okay? So look right here. So each one of these little circles, enclosed by the little blue circle, is um, is reminiscent of one of the minor criteria. Okay, so let's start at the hands. Okay, so this hand and also this hand. Okay, this reminds me of things like um, Osler nodes, okay, or Janeway lesions. Basically. Immuno immunological evidence that there is some type of endocarditis going on, right? You're shooting out emboli to the distal parts of the body, and that's really manifesting as Osler's nose and Janeway lesions, and, and we can remember that with these hands that's going on here. Now, next, we're talking about the elbow joints, and what happens at the first elbow joint is IV drug use, right? The uh, you know the, the the person using the drugs is injecting it you know into the arm uh, right over there and that helps me remember that the second is not what we're injecting but rather what we're taking out and this reminds me of cultures so this is different from the major criteria of cultures because these are cultures that are positive but they don't meet the specific criteria that we discussed in the um, in the major criteria on the last slide if you need to go review um, that and next the heart encircled because this tells me um, really one of two things. So the first is that there is a predisposition predisposition to heart disease. For instance, the patient already has some kind of heart disease going on, right? So that is one of the minor criteria. Um, in addition, another one of the criteria that relates to the heart is emboli. And for the most part, we're talking about septic emboli right here, right? So it's shooting off these vegetations, and they can go into any part of the body, the lungs, um, the kidneys creating a glomerulonephritis, the head creating some kind of septic emboli in the brain, causing like almost like a stroke. Um, so that's, that, that's what helps me remember that. So it's embolic, um, it, it's septic emboli coming from the heart going to the rest of the body. And finally, the head is circled because we're talking about, you know, um, pyresis or fever, right? So... That is also one of the criteria greater than 38 degrees Celsius. So with this in mind, let's count up all of the criteria that we have, right? So the first criteria is basically that there's fever, okay? Second criteria is immunological compromise showing up as Roth spots, Janeway lesions, things like that. Third is the cultures that don't fit the criteria, right? The fourth is IV drug use or heart disease at rest. And the fifth, remember the heart, shooting out emboli, septic emboli. Okay, so these are the five minor criteria. So in terms of risk stratification, we really care if um, the patient has definitive endocarditis so we can start treatment as soon as possible, or possible endocarditis, meaning uh, you know we should definitely keep endocarditis in mind, but there could be other things that we should also consider in the differential. So I've you know created this kind of uh, clever mnemonic to help you remember what the major criteria um, for a definitive stratification are by the Duke's criteria, right? So you can either have, so these are really or, right? So or, 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 okay? So for instance, we see you only need one pathological criteria to meet the definitive diagnosis of infective endocarditis. You need two major, you need three minor and one major, four minor and one major, or five minor by itself. And these, either one of these options will give you the diagnosis definitively of infective endocarditis. In terms of possible, this is not so important, but you should, you should keep this in mind, um, one major and one minor or three minor. So even though you know I created this mnemonic with a one, two, three, four, five here, there's actually really a more interesting way of, of thinking about this.
So over here, I've created a point value system to differentiate between definitive versus possible infective endocarditis. I don't think this point system is discussed anywhere online or in the literature, um, but I kind of just messed around with the numbers and this came up and it makes a lot of sense and it's very easy to remember. So in terms of definitive endocarditis, let's say that we need more than 10 or more points, okay? For possible endocarditis, it's really just six or more points. So in terms of the pathological criteria that we discussed about in the last few slides, right? If we have one pathological criteria, that really meets definitive diagnosis. So one pathological criteria will be given 10 points and we see that this meets the definitive endo effective endocarditis diagnosis. Now, one major criteria is worth five points because as we remember, two major uh, criteria will be worth 10 points, right? So that works. And finally, one minor is worth two points because as we remember, five minors is equal to a definitive diagnosis of infective endocarditis. And one minor being two points, that works as well. So using these point values of the 10, five, and two, let's go back to the last page and see what see if it makes sense or not. So right over here, five minor, right? If each one is worth two points and we have 10, this meets the definitive diagnosis of uh, infective endocarditis. Now let's let's see over here. What about this? Three minor, right? Plus one major gives you 10 points and that works as well. So to fact check, let's go over here and see if this works. One major, five points, plus one minor. And this is seven and, and, and it unfortunately doesn't meet definitive, but it meets the possible um, the possible infective endocarditis option of six or more points. And also three minor right over here, right? three times two is six, and this works as well. So this is basically a very easy to remember point system um, that helps you to risk stratify, uh, risk stratify patients into either having definitive endocarditis or possible infective endocarditis um, as measured by the Duke criteria.